Hello, my pet friends. I'm Ines Goger, and today I will represent the painting of a snow leopard. I found this photo on Pixabay site. For my work, I always use a photo that is licensed for public use or I use my own. First, let me introduce the equipment I use for this picture. I paint on Hanne Müller cold press watercolor paper 300, 300 grams and 100% cotton. For watercolors, I always use paper designed for watercolors. Quality watercolor paper is, ex is expensive, but it is a must if you want to be able to paint with watercolors. Do not use thin 80 gram paper because it will wrinkle up and ear very quickly. With watercolor, it is not worth using cheap paper. If it is possible, use 100% cotton watercolor paper at, of at least 300 grams. For paper that has a lower proportion of cotton and is thinner, the colors will ex express differently. You will be disappointed. I also advise beginners to use cold press paper, especially if you are going to use the wet on wet technique which I use for most of my paintings. You can save on watercolor paints as you, get, uh, as you can get quality paints for a relatively low price, but don't save on paper. You can draw on both sides, so you really make a good use of the paper. You don't need a lot of watercolor brushes like you uh, do for acrylic or oil. However, brushes for watercolors are much more expensive than for other techniques. Generally, you need three brushes, one medium round, round uh, one thin round with longer bristles for details and one large flat for wetting the paper. Uh, the last is optional, especially if you are drawing on smaller paper size, in which case you can, uh, you can wet paper with a medium size bro uh, round brush. When using watercolors, do not use acrylic or oil brushes, uh, as they do not absorb enough water and are quick on, and are uh, difficult to draw with. You can also get watercolors uh, brushes for reasonable prices, but uh, you will be able to work easier with a better quality brush. I use Da Vinci mix brushes uh, for myself, which uh, are made of synthetic and natural fibers combined. I mostly use only one watercolor brush, and that is Da Vinci Casaneo size zero. It is just soft enough and uh, super absorbed uh, for details. I like to use X Long Detail Micron by Dynasty, size uh, 50, or the uh, Da Vinci Casaneo brush with longer hair, size 8, which I actually didn't use in this picture. If you take good care for it, uh, you can use a good quality watercolor brush for 15, 20 years, as uh, watercolor paint does not destroy brushes as, you, as much as acrylic or, or oil. Never let watercolor brush stand in water for a long time, not even while drawing. If you look this video, you will see that uh, I never leave a brush I don't use in a pot of water. The brush will inflate and collapse. Therefore, use the water pot only to wet and wash the brush, and then place the brush on horizontal surface. Clean the brush at the end. You can use brush soap. After washing, shape the tip of the, uh, of the damp brush gently. And you can also use quite a bit of a hand cream.
Use watercolors only. The property of these paints is that they mix with water and are translucent. You can apply them in many layers. You get colors, uh, you, would, you get color shades with different amounts of water. Never apply paint directly from the container to the paper, but first mix it on a palette with, wet, with water. This paint is not used like acrylic or oil, which is uh, where the paint can be applied in thick uh, layers. Uh, here, the paint is uh, mixed with water, and then you paint with that colored water. Watercolors come in a wide variant of price ranges. You can use colors for beginners, colors for students, and colors for professionals. The price difference, of course, uh, is of course very large. The differences are in pigmentation, transparency, and granulation. Quality paints are uh, well transparent and highly pigmented which means that you need to use a very, very little quantity of them. You can buy watercolor paints in tubes, tabs, or in liquid. I like to use in a tabs myself. I use the White Nights and Schminke Horadam colors. White Nights are much cheaper than Schminke, but are still of a quite high quality. Persistence is also good. Uh, of course, uh, you don't need 80 colors. I have about 80 colors of white nights and a lot of brushes, but in reality, I use a maximum of three or four brushes and a maximum of 10 colors. So you don't necessarily need a lot of colors to be able to paint. I prefer to mix them myself rather than using prepared ones. So you don't have to spend too much money on colors if you're just getting into painting with watercolors. However, it is true that watercolor paints uh, last for a very long time and you can have one small basic set for months or even years. When you're painting with watercolors, you also need a palette for mixing colors, two pots of fresh clean water, and a paper towel or a clean cotton cloth. I used a masking marker to paint some spots on this snow leopard. I covered these areas uh, with it where I wanted the papers to stay white. In watercolor technique, we don't use white colors. In the end, you may or may not use a little white washi. You don't necessarily need marker liquid uh, for white areas. You can easily omit the areas you want to stay white. At the end of this movie, you will see that I added some white whiskers with white brush. Uh, let us now start with the painting of the snow leopard. First, I sketch it. You can try to draw it yourself or download the sketch from the link in description. Before wetting the paper, I use a masking marker to paint the areas I want to stay white. You can also use masking fluid later on already colored paper. It is important, however, that the masking fluid doesn't remain on the paper for more than two days as it is then difficult to remove. Once the masking fluid has dried, you can wet the paper. Before wetting the paper, first apply the paints to the palette, otherwise the paper will dry out too fast. I started painting with finest gray paint diluted with a lot of water. 
I omit areas that supposed to stay white. I always paint in multiple layers. The under layers must dry before applying the next one. When the first coat of finest gray dry, I applied raw sienna, paint uh, diluted with a lot of water. You can dry the picture naturally, but you, if you don't want to wait, use a hair dryer. For the next layer, I used raw sienna, which I diluted with a less water de this time. For darker areas, I mixed sepia color with raw sienna. Once the area around the nose is dry, you can start applying a mixture of water and perry maroon paint. Once the snoot is dry, you can start shading with a mixture of sepia and perlin maroon. This time I use a thinner brush Da Vinci Cosmotop Mix size 1. First I line the top of the snout, then with a clean and wet brush I smeared the paint over the snout. You need to be quick, so the paint doesn't dry out too soon. There shouldn't be a lot of water on the brush, otherwise you will dilute the paint on the paper too much. Keep the brush wet. You soak it in the water, then wipe it once in a paper towel that you always have on hand or next to the paint. When the snout is dry, darken the holes in the nose with sepia paint and then smear the paint down from the snout with a clean wet brush. Then I paint tiny hairs with sepia over the nose 
on dry painting. To be able to continue painting faster, I use a hair dryer. Then I use the masking marker to paint a line just above the nose because I want uh, it to stay brighter. I paint the area around the eyes with a mixture of sepia and ivory black. I shaded the upper part of the eyes with a wet brush and a small amount of this same mixture. I also used uh, this same color for the nose and shaded it with a wet brush so that the hairs are not so pronounced. For shading of the nose, I used uh, a mixture of sepia and rose sienna. I colored cheeks with a mixture of rose sienna and sepia. Under his eyes, I used finest gray and ivory black. At first, I colored eyes with raw sienna and rutile yellow, and then used finest gray in the middle.
I lined the eye with a mixture of sepia and ivory black. Under the eyes, in and around nose, I use spineless grey and ivory black. The holes in the nose I painted with a heavily pigmented ivory black. I line the muzzle with a mixture of finest grey and ivory black. Then smear it with a wet brush. I also paint the spots on the muzzle with the same mixture. I never clean the color palette while painting. I mix new colors into the old mix. I painted the neck with a mixture of finest grey, ivory black and a little sepia, and then smear it with a wet brush. I also added raw sienna.
The dots are a mix of finest grey, ivory black and sepia colours. Now I wet the forehead with a wet brush. This is a wet on wet technique. Then I applied a little finest grey and sepia paint. I also painted their ears and the edges around the head with the same mixture. The paper must be dry here. I used ivory black to darken uh, the inside of the ears. When the nose dried, I shaded it again with sepia and a little finest grey.
when the paper is completely dry, I wet the entire area around the leopard. I will now shade the background. Again, I use a mix of finest grey and ivory black. I paint the dots with strongly pigmented blend of ivory black and finest grey. You could also use natural black. To keep the spots from getting too sharp, I smear them with a clean wet brush. I paint the chin uh, lightly with the same mixture, diluted with a lot of water. Once the paper around the cheeks and ears had dried, I can apply the same mixture of paint again. The spots on the head and forehead are also made with the same color mix. mix.
Then I wear the right part of the background around the ear, paint uh, it gently with the same mixture, smearing the tip of, of the ear into the background. When the spots on forehead and head dry out, I paint them with a stronger blend of finest grey and ivory black. Then I use a little sepia color. I also paint the spots on the sides with the same color I use for the spots on the head and forehead. I shade them with a mixture of sepia, ivory black and finest grey. The leopard is now almost done. I always paint the eyes on the end. There is no particular reason for that, for this. I find it interesting how the paint comes into life with eyes. For the eyes, I use gently blends of finest grey and sepia. I paint pupils with strong finest grey and ivory black and shade them first with paint and then smear with the wet brush. Then I shade the top of the eyes. If you look closely at the reference photo, you will see that the pupils are not fully visible because of the light reflection. I initially coated the part with a masking marker. A 
Again, I darken the spots of, on forehead and the spots on the sides, but not the spots higher on the head. In this way, you achieve a 3D effect. I also darkened Mount Aria. Suddenly the leopard comes to life. The eyes give the paint a completely different feel than before. When the painting is uh, completely dry, you can remove the masking fluid with rubber. Since I don't like sharp white lines, I shade them with a light a blend of sepia and uh, pinus grey. I also shaded the muzzle to get a 3D effect. I darkened uh, the dots on muzzle again with a mixture of finest uh, grey and ivory black. I also darkened the inside of the ears and the white areas on eyes with the same mixture. I paint some more dark uh, whiskers. I draw some white whiskers with white 
gouache and uh, brighten the eyes a little bit. I wet the paper with a white brush and shaded it with a, a light mixture of sepia and finest grey. I also added raw sienna all, all over the hat. Uh, to it to fit with the neck better. And here is the result. I hope you tried to draw a snow leopard yourself. Uh, show your painting and share experience with me and others. Thank you for supporting me and being my Patreon. See you next time.